The early years foundation stage reforms focus on two key goals. Firstly, to improve the outcomes for children at age five, with a focus on improving their early language skills. And secondly, to reduce unnecessary workload for teachers and practitioners, so they can spend more time supporting and teaching children in their care. We know that high quality interactions with adults during a child's early years is one of the most significant contributors to later success. As part of our wider reforms, we have improved the approach to early years assessment, shifting the focus away from assessment paperwork and tracking towards more broad and rich curriculum activities. To achieve this, we have made amendments to the early learning goals, making them clear, specific and easier for teachers to assess against with the aim of reducing the amount of time teachers spend assessing children against the Early Years Foundation Stage Profile and increasing the amount of time teachers spend supporting individual children. There is a focus throughout the goals on strengthening communication and language and building rich vocabulary, mirroring the wider aims of the reforms. Physical development is now split between fine and gross motor skills and we have added a goal relating to self-regulation. All changes to the goals have been based on the latest evidence on child development. There are now only two bands to assess against, expected or emerging, and we have removed the statutory duty on local authorities to externally moderate 25% of schools each year. This will reduce the need for teachers to gather excessive evidence to justify their professional judgments and also contribute to a simplified assessment process at the end of the EYFS. It's important that teachers and practitioners only record information that is useful to them and to the teaching of their children. The principles underpinning the EYFS reforms are very much in line with Ofsted's Education Inspection Framework, published in 2019. In September 2019, we introduced the Education Inspection Framework. This was partly because we were concerned that what children learned was sometimes coming second to delivering performance data. We were also concerned that this was leading to unnecessary workloads for teachers. The collection of performance data results in teaching to the test and a narrowing of the curriculum. And we know that curriculum narrowing has the greatest negative effect on the children we should care about most, such as the most disadvantaged and the least able. These concerns are as true in the early years as in any other part of education. In reception, for example, a focus on the proportion of children that achieve a good level of development could sometimes narrow the curriculum that they receive. When we're on inspection, we will no longer look at internal progress and attainment data. Instead, we're exploring the impact of the curriculum, finding out how much of the curriculum children know, understand and have remembered, as well as whether children are ready or not for what comes next. So, let's consider the curriculum. Ofsted's definition of the curriculum is the framework for setting out the aims of a programme of education, including the knowledge and skills to be gained at each stage. In the early years, we want to be clear about what we want children to learn and understand. This means that staff need to plan so that they can make sure that children learn the specific knowledge and skills that are important. Of course, there may also be times when staff plan more open-ended learning opportunities for children to explore and represent their ideas through play. It is important to remember that the curriculum in a primary school starts when children first join in the early years, be that in the nursery or reception class or earlier. Inspectors will want to understand how the curriculum in the early years is built on in Key Stage 1, as well as understanding how knowledge builds in a sequence from the moment that children join the school to the time that they leave at the end of Year 6. We know there's a lot of excellent assessment practice taking place throughout schools and in early year settings. With assessment being just one tool to support children's development, it is key that assessments take place in a way that is proportionate to its impact on children's development. Assessment will always form a meaningful part of teachers' and practitioners' daily role. It should be observational and formative, and should feed into their interactions with children. It should not be a series of trackers, charts or tick lists that are burdensome to produce and do not directly support children's development. We know that children learn best from high quality interactions with adults and that assessment and reporting can take up valuable time. Consequently, leaders should make sure that what teachers spend time assessing is worth recording, particularly if the assessing takes those adults away from helping children who might have fallen behind. Some things do not need formally assessing, yet there are aspects of the curriculum that teachers really do need to assess, for example a child's understanding of some mathematical concepts. 
These assessments are very important because they help teachers to understand what they need to do to help children learn more. This makes the difference between being a confident mathematician or not. The DfE and Ofsted are clear that the EYFSP should not be used as an accountability measure for individual teachers or for schools. It is designed to be an end-of-year assessment to inform discussions between reception teachers, Year 1 teachers and parents which will support a child's transition into their new Year 1 class. The aim of the EYFS reforms is to enable teachers and practitioners to spend more time interacting with and teaching children. We want to empower them to use their knowledge of the children in their care and their professional judgement to make confident and accurate assessments that directly support learning and development. This is a move away from a system where the expectations on practitioners to collect and rely on evidence gathering and data snapshots in order to demonstrate performance to senior leaders, governors or local authorities that are not focused on children as individuals. We are clear that teachers and practitioners are best placed to assess the children using their in-depth knowledge of them as individuals and professional judgement. So what does this mean for inspection? We inspect in line with the principles and requirements of the Early Years Foundation stage, which is clear that assessment should not entail prolonged breaks from interaction with children, nor should it require excessive paperwork. Any paperwork should be limited to that which is necessary to promote children's successful learning and development. When inspecting, we want to find out what it's like to be a child at this school, and we will do that through seeing the curriculum in action and talking to leaders, staff, parents and children about what they do every day. We want teachers and other staff to have the confidence to show inspectors what they do, not to rely on unnecessary paperwork that they produce just in case. This is why we will not look at internal data when we're on inspection. We want to reduce workload burdens and don't want schools to produce or keep paperwork just because they think we might want to see it. We want schools to spend their time on what matters most, and that's being with the children. This is because we know the quality and quantity of interactions and experiences is what makes a real difference to children's physical, emotional and intellectual development. We believe that this shift in practice will help deliver the best outcomes for children and empower earliest teachers and practitioners to do what they do best.